first we should probably talk just what what is vaping. I mean, it's a when a person vapes, they use a vape pen. It's also called a e cigarette, and it uses a battery that heats a liquid, a special liquid that is converted into an aerosol, which is typically a mixture of water and uh, uh, nicotine and flavorings and other chemicals. Uh, this is inhaled, and in this heating process, uh, there's all, there are also other substances that are produced, so uh, things such as formaldehyde and other harmful chemicals. And obviously, these are inhaled into the lungs, so these are uh, delivered deep into the lungs and can be very addictive, which we know nicotine is part of that, and it can be very addictive. And so studies have shown that e-cigarette uh, use uh, does cause uh, some increase in airway resistance and also produces inflammation in the lungs, which is uh, similar to one, what one might see in lung cancer development. Um, obviously, there's been some other, uh, like popcorn lung and other issues with the lung. Now, those were caused, they, they, they found specific uh, chemicals that were being added, like mostly flavorings. Um, and so, because for a while there, there was this like outbreak of popcorn lung, everybody was hearing about, but they removed that additive. And um, I think that's, that's less than it used to be, but um, but that's the other kind of uh, damage that can happen. Yeah, well, that's the thing. So we really don't know. It's, it's really too early to tell. Uh, vaping has only been around a few years, maybe five, ten. I'm not even sure about how ten. Uh, so it hasn't been around that long. And also the people that do vape the most are the younger population, uh, especially teenagers. So, um, and some estimates I've read somewhere like one in five teenagers vape versus like one in three adults. So, uh, you know, it's still very early and lung damage takes a long time. And I mean, we, you know, we see lung cancer mostly in people that are in their sixties. I mean, these are people that have smoked like 30 plus 40 pack years, you know, which is a pack year is like one pack a day for, uh, you know, for so long. So, so it just takes so long to, for this damage to happen. And um, so and you have to have these really long term studies uh, and these could take decades. So obviously that it's a tremendous amount of resources that would be required to conduct these uh, long term studies. Um, so that's why we really haven't seen. I mean, we'll probably be seeing in 10, 10 or 20 years what the results are. But, um, you know, um, yeah, we do want to try to try to find a way to, to to find that a little bit sooner so that we don't find, you know, these bad effects um, that could have hopefully been prevented. Right. So since we, you know, couldn't do a long term study, um, so my colleagues and I, you know, we had, we decided to do what we call a case control study, which is where you already have the person. So the person with lung cancer, um, we already have the cases. And so what you do is you look at what their exposure was. Um, so we you go back and look at the record and, and you check all the you know the exposures. And, and so what we did there was we took all the cases from about 2013 to 21 when our elect, uh, electronic medical records really uh, started in 2013, where we have uh, really good valid data. And so we took that, uh, all those cases, and we had about 5,000, close to 5,000 lung cancer cases. And then we compared to those to what we call the controls, which uh, who were matched on several characteristics because you wanna kind of reduce the noise. You want, you want your controls to be as similar to the cases as possible. So we matched on age, gender, uh, uh, location of residence, like county, and also the year of diagnosis of, of the person. So they were um, the same, like looking at the same year. Um, and so using those factors, you know, we matched, actually we put, we had five controls for every case, which is typical to have more controls per case. Again, you know, you want as many people as possible, make it, you know, average those differences out. So that really what you're looking at is your exposure of interest, which in our case is vaping and smoking. Uh, so, uh, so we had about uh, twenty five thousand um, you know controls because about five uh, controls per case, and um, so what we found there is uh, we actually found some some huge differences in the uh, lung cancer develop risk of lung cancer development. So our odds ratios, which is our me measure, a statistical measure of risk, and what we found is uh, in the range of sixty on our first estimates, and these were like uh, they were adjusted for age, gender, and race. Um, so that's, that's a huge, huge number. I mean, you know, we're, we're like, even if you find an odds ratio of two, that means you basically have double the risk of, of, you know, versus like a smoker versus a non-smoker. So what we found were the vapors and smokers had 
about a 60 increased risk of developing lung cancer compared to a non-smoker. A smoker had about 13 times the risk. So that's actually a fourfold increase in risk um, from the, the people that vaped and smoked versus those that only smoked. And, that, and so we would have loved to have a, a vaping only group, but unfortunately we did not because like I said, this, you know, vaping is relatively new. People that already have lung cancer, um, you know, they're probably relatively early vapors and they've all pretty much smoked. I mean, 98%, I think, had smoked. And now this is all based on self-report to remember, you know, when you go in, they ask you the questions, you know, uh, before your visits, you know, that's what the, the, these data are based on. Um, uh, one of our limitations is that we did not have, you know, really good quantities. We couldn't uh, get the, the total exposure to the vaping and smoking. Uh, for vaping, actually, we, we only knew whether they had vaped. We didn't really have a quantity. For smoking, we had some quantities of like pack years. And when we looked at that, when we looked at the actual quantity of pack years, those who had the bigger quantity of pack years had obviously the, the highest, higher risks of, you know, which is, is, you know, you can say it's due to smoking, but, you know, the smoke, you know, we looked at smokers only and the vapors and smokers. So um, no matter how we did it, we, we still found that the vapors and smokers always had about four times increased risk of lung cancer than the smokers only. Um, and even when we looked at histology uh, or looked at like gender, um, different factors, uh, the histology would be adenocarcinoma versus not, not a squamous cell. Um, yeah, so we, we just continued to find those uh, increased risks. And also even when, so we when we adjusted for COPD, which is chronic obstru obstructive pulmonary disease, which is very common disease in smokers, and also for coronary artery disease, which are also associated with lung cancer, now those did drop to about 30, the, the odds ratios dropped to about 30, but then they were still about uh, nine, nine or 10. Um, so, so they were still about three and a half to four times higher, um, even when we adjusted for the COPD and CAD. Um, so again, just, just huge risks. <laughs>Well, obviously, you know, th this is the first study, really, the first published study. I mean, we we looked at all the literature. I mean, we really combed it through. Did not see anything that really looked at, um, you know, that, that lung cancer risk. Um, and, and it could be done. I mean, other people have registries or any. So, you know, this is a starting point for for this. But, you know, it, it's, it's definitely a, a warning sign, a warning bell, whatever you want to call it, that, uh, yeah, that providers should really be... Um, you know, finding out about the vaping, um, you know, there, there's potential of, of a lot of harm that could be done and damage to the lungs. And, um, you know, they, they should, providers should be taking an active role, uh, I believe, in, uh, in, in advising uh, patients because they're the ones who are probably, patients are going to listen to the most uh, and, you know, advising them on the danger, potential dangers. I mean, you know, like I said, this is not conclusive. It's a starting point. We need to better quantify these estimates and, and have, you know, the more in-depth studies to confirm these results. But, um, you know, we had a lot of, a lot of people and, uh, and the results are, are what they are. So, um, definitely showing, uh, showing that higher risk. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's obviously very, very difficult to, to quit smoking, but, you know, we do have programs we need to try to, uh, get away from the harm reduction, which, uh, is, is what the tobacco industry really wants to promote because they want people to think that vaping is better than smoking and it's, and so people will switch and they, they can make money still. But, uh, but what we're seeing here is that, that there's not, not a lot of harm reduction and it's just a different type of harm potentially. Um, you know, the main difference between smoking and vaping, you know, in smoking, the, the nicotine is being burned. It's, you know, burned through the smoke. It's a combustion, you know, that combustion process. Whereas with vaping, it's, it's the, the heating of the liquid and the aerosols. And, you know, even though, you know, you have thousands of carcinogens there with the smoking or hundreds of carcinogens with the smoking, but, um, you know, there's still a lot of harmful chemicals with, with the vaping as well. Um, you know, metals, uh, uh, formaldehyde, uh, benzene, you know, there, there's still a lot of, a lot of harmful chemicals there being delivered into the lungs. Mm -hmm.